This session was up and down. It was a very interesting one. We did see the market starting off on a negative note. In fact, we saw a bounce off the low of this correction so far at 4,518 points very early on in the piece. And after uh, testing that level, we managed to see a gain up. There's nothing like stimulus to get a market moving, and that's exactly what we saw today. There was a Bloomberg article out saying that the White House in the U.S. is thinking of more stimulus, this time in the form of a temporary um, break in terms of payrolls tax to try and get hiring happening again in the U.S. So we did see the U.S. futures shooting up, up by 0.3 percent, and the Australian market just really following suit. So if we have a look at the Aussie share market finishing up by 0.3 percent, but that seemed to have a positive impact on markets around the region. We're now seeing the Japanese market also breaking into positive territory. If we have a look at that jobs number having a good impact in terms of that consumer discretionary sector. We saw JB Hi-Fi up by 3.2 percent today. And if I just bring up an intraday graph of the discretionary sector, you can see 11.30 when those numbers come, came out, we saw a lift for that area. So this is an area that has been uh, sold down very heavily throughout the corrections. So good to see at least a tiny bounce back with that discretionary sector up by 0.7%. Dave, uh, the market, we did finish, as we saw before, uh, in positive territory. Is there much conviction there, though, in terms of the movements we're seeing either way? Well, if we have a look at the momentum in terms of this downturn, we are starting to see slower um, moves down. So that's a positive in terms of weekly performance. But I guess our market takes its cue quite a bit from the Shanghai Composite or the Chinese market as well. Now, the Chinese uh, sell-off since the peak in April has been quite heavy, heavy down by about 13% since the peak that we saw in April. While here in Australia, our correction has been a fall of 9.2% over nine weeks. So if we have a look at the Shanghai Composite and see where it is in terms of technical the good news is that it does seem to be forming a base at 2,700 points. We've seen a bounce off that a couple of times in the last couple of weeks, and it does look like it's holding for the time being. So if we do see that level holding and we see a bounce up in the Chinese market, we know that that will probably flow on to the Australian market, which is keeping a close eye on, in, on performance of China. In terms of technicals, we did see a bounce off the lows of the session, but I guess the big level that everyone's watching is 4,477 points. That's the lowest point of the year so far in 2011. If we do see a break of that, then that would be a break of the neck line in the double top that we're seeing, and then we could see the market targeting 4,175 points, which is the lowest point that we saw last year. See the, the jobs data that came out today. I mean, did we see much of a reaction just, I suppose, from a, a stock perspective? We did see a huge reaction in terms of those retail stocks. So I guess if we did see a rate hike today, it would have been a huge negative in terms of the banking sector because the housing market's still looking a little bit soft and also the retail sector. So these two areas were ones which benefited in terms of the, the interest, um, in terms of the uh, interest rate expectations. Of course, it also corresponded with a massive fall in the Aussie dollar. And if we have a look at the Aussie dollar, it was a very sharp sell-off when those numbers came out at 11.30. And if you have a look at that sell-off we actually fell a full cent we have since seen a little bit of a recovery uh, in the Aussie dollar but a huge reaction in terms of the Aussie dollar and that really tells you a lot in terms of interest rate expectations do the, the worries mount for a stock like Macquarie I mean particularly I suppose with uh, suggestions of you know potentially people looking to jump boat from actually within the organization I mean, if you're buying into Macquarie, you're buying into the fact that market volumes are going to recover, especially in terms of uh, in terms of IPOs coming through to the market. And a great chunk of Macquarie's business is now from the U.S., so you're really banking on U.S. volumes recovering. And if you have a look at volumes in the market, still very anemic. I mean, IPO activity on the Australian market this year has just been an absolute trickle. So until we see these things improving, it's going to be a difficult environment for Macquarie. You know, during, before the global financial financial crisis, Macquarie was a stock typically with a return on equity above 20%, but of course its model has changed to that more traditional investment banking model, and we've seen that return on equity now lingering around about 7%. So a lot of shareholders questioning the model and asking where the growth is going to come from, and we're really not going to see any growth until we see at least volumes in the market, as well as uh, some, some of the equity cap capital market activity improving.